So today we're gonna do Suratul Fath, and Fath means victory. Some of the ayahs we we gonna cover it, and we will see the background also. For every surah, there will be a story behind it. What's the story? Because uh, Quran was revealed in twenty three years gradually. What's the difference between the Quran and the other books, Torah, Injil? It was in the one shot, but when we see the Quran, it was the uh, gradually uh, like revealed through the inspiration which is called wahi revelation and angel jibril got it and angel jibril was a stern strong angel and it was 23 years and every time when it was revealed there will be certain things happening to console the heart of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there are Makki surahs, there are Madani surahs, and when we especially read it, mashallah, some of you are uh, hafiza, so you know what is Makki and Madani because when you read it, you say, oh, this is Makkiya, this is Madaniya, Suratul Fatiha, Makkiya, Suratul Baqarah, Madaniya. So you knew all this, Alhamdulillah. Sometimes I feel young girls know more than us, and that's a good thing though. We appreciate them. So today's uh, surah, uh, Suratul Fath. Inna fathana laka fathan mubina. Verily we have given you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a manifest victory. So after reading this ayah, I will tell you a few, few things, uh, like you know, what's the background behind it. And the next ayah talk about, لِيَغْفِرَ اللَّكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ زَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَقَّرَ that Allah may forgive your sins of the past and the future, complete his favor on you and guide you to the straight path. So when we see here the background of this surah, so a clear victory. What Allah says, a clear victory to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so the indication over here is to the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Okay, remember this Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which was apparently a defeat since the Muslim had to agree on the terms that were unfavorable to them. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah was there were so many things which is not in the favor of Muslims. Okay, but it was those very condition, those terms through them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gates for success for the Muslim and this is why the treaty of Hudaybiyah is known as Fathan Mubina open clear victory we are doing Suratul Fath so we learn that several years in Medina and after the battle of Khandak uh, basically so this is after Badr okay this is after Uhud this is after Khandak Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had a dream and in which he saw that him and his companion, Sahaba Ikram, they were all performing Umrah. And the dreams of prophets, remember, they are revelation. And so the Prophet ﷺ instructed the Muslims to prepare for Umrah. So 1400 Muslims went along with Prophet ﷺ to Makkah in order to perform Umrah. But what happened as the Mushrikeen learned of the Muslims approaching Makkah, they became very defensive. And they did not want to allow Muslims to come into the Makkah. Just imagine, they spent so many years in Makkah and now after migration, they are not allowing to enter. It's like your home, okay? And uh, because they had expelled the Muslim from Makkah and uh, in the first place, and they had been fighting so many battles with them, so how could they let Muslims come in Makkah safely and perform the tawaf, perform umrah in front of them? So while they could do nothing to them, you know, this is kind of jealousy or arrogance, you could say. Because Makkah is in a safe place with no bloodshed because it is a sacred place, isn't it? And no bloodshed is allowed and even mushrikeen, they respected that. The people, they, they respect that. So what happened as Muslims uh, were drawing closer and closer to Makkah, the Mushrikeen of Makkah kept sending groups after groups in order to ward the Muslims. So one battle or one fight would happen so that Muslim would be forced 
uh, to fight and they would uh, change their mind and not come uh, into Makkah. What happened? The Prophet ﷺ, he changes route. You know, we, we go one route or different. So he changes route. And he changes route. He undertook a more difficult route to make to Makkah. And this is why this is known as Hudaybiyah. Because Prophet ﷺ end up at their army, small groups of people, the entrance of uh, Makkah with their weapons, making it very clear that Muslims could not enter Makkah without a battle. So now Prophet ﷺ, he did not want to battle because of the course, the Muslim were then uh, state of Ihram. You know, when you are in Ihram, you are not supposed to fight. And they knew this. Okay, they can't fight it. So how could you fight a battle? You couldn't, right? They, they knew for sure. And the Muslims did not even uh, come prepare for a battle. So what happened? Eventually, the people went back and forth. So we learned that uh, the people volunteered. For example, people from Taif or people from neighboring uh, tribes, they volunteered in order to convince the people of Makkah to let the Muslims in. Because this was unprecedented. Like, you know, if somebody is not listening, you would go and tell them, okay, this is not right, do this th that way. So no one had been ever prevented from doing Umrah, from uh, making Hajj in Makkah. This was the ever first time, you know, that people were being prevented from coming into Makkah. And this was clearly bias and hatred that Muslims had for the Muslims like mushrikin had for the muslims this this is mushrikin like non-muslims we call it mushrik because they do shirk what they do shirk they believe in the de uh, deities like idol worship okay so now what happened eventually the uh, mushrikin agreed that they would sign a treaty the, uh, with the muslims and what happened part of that treaty was that now muslim will go back and without any umrah no umrah for now and they will come following year to perform umrah and they will come only for three days now this is the treaty okay apparently it looks really hard that moment of time you went for the umrah in the ihram and they are saying go back and not only that when you came next time only for the three days so this is really hard though so this uh, then another clause was that any person goes from Makkah to Medina, he has to be returned to Makkah. But any person who gets from Medina to Makkah, he can stay in Makkah. So you understand this was clearly against the Muslim, not in the favor of Muslims at all. First of all, they send it back. The second thing only for the three days. Now another clause that any person from Makkah to Medina has to return or Makkah but any person who goes from Medina to Makkah he can stay in Makkah. He can uh, stay. He can. He can stay. He can stay there. So you understand this was clearly against the Muslim not in the favor of Muslim. Like apparently it looks that way right. Because now we have seen just now the translation, Fathan Mubina, clear, open uh, Mubin, like uh, open victory. But I am telling you the background. What was the thing going on? What happened? What was the story behind the Fathan Mubina? So another condition was there should be no battle between Muslims and Mushriki. And for 10 years, no battle between them for 10 years. This was the clause they write it down actually. And this was so difficult for Muslims, but they had no other option. And the other option was fight between, uh, like a uh, fight battle. And this is something that Muslims were not going to in the state of Ihram. That moment of time, they came in the Ihram. Can we have the fight? No, it's a big no. They can't fight it. So the Muslims were so sad at that point. And Umar, Umar radiyal anhu, when he heard this ayah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, Umar radiallahu anhu said, Fatha? Haza Fatha? So this is Fatha. Like what kind of Fatha is, it, is this? This is not a victory. This is a failure. We are signing up for the failure because uh, A, we were not allowed to go for Umrah this year. And secondly, all our Muslim brothers and sisters who are trapped in Makkah, they cannot uh, come to us. Is that fair? This is not fair. And we learn that 
uh, while this treaty was being written down a muslim he escaped from makkah managed to come all the way to hudaybiyah and what happened sahal bin umar who was uh, dictating the treaty he said that right now you return him if you don't return him that's no treaty then so this is a person that this man has been um, abused and tortured for past 4 to 5 years and muslim had to return to them and umar radhiyallahu anhu actually went uh, uh, close to him abu jandal radhiyallahu anhu and he said here said the sword i can't do anything i am in the state of ihram the muslim can't do anything here is the sword you know you take the sword and you fight your father because it was the father sahal bin umar who was dictating the treaty just imagine father and son there's a difference in the aqeedah and iman so the muslims were so sad at the point but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in fathan alaka fathan mubina so apparently something looks like a huge huge like a downfall loss but it's a victory because allah said so that's it we believe in it so many times it happens in life you know things are beyond our control and you are put in a situation when you feel like uh, you are trapped it happens like you know and you feel like this was the worst decision that uh, you could have made but what happened what other choices did you have sometimes you, you don't have any choice left right you take the decision so you, you don't have any choice so you accept it so radi to billahi rabbu we accept it sometimes we have to make a choice we can't be sitting idle and saying okay it's going to we have to you have to take a risk right and uh, what will happen allah will bring about the success from that and regardless of whether success comes or not when a person goes through some difficulty then does allah not forgive him his sins of course he does understand that the whole situation i described to you this was a fathan mubina this is a open victory but behind that the whole situation the things they have and treaty of hudaybiya was not a easy thing though and the next aya li yaghfir laka allah ma taqaddama min zambika wa ma taakhara that allah may forgive for you uh, what proceeded of your sins and what will follow and complete his favor upon you and guide you to a uh, straight path so really for a believer there is no failure in life we all are believer so there is no failure we have to be strong there is absolutely no failure in life something that seems to be failure but that could be turned into victory we all go through certain tests and trials every person has a different test maybe she is going through something she is going through she is going through something you all go through something i go through something we all have to because this life is full of test and we are believers so we have to go through the test but we have to be successful so allah says you know allah is one we we plan something okay but who is the best planner mudabbir who is the planner ultimately allah subhanahu wa taala it if allah subhanahu wa taala you trust and uh, complete rely on allah subhanahu wa taala everything you know you are going through Allah will make things easy for you. I know sometimes it's it's really difficult but but Allah will make it easy. So here Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is told that your sins will be forgiven because of uh, you know this uh, uh, protected from sin means yes we all are human being Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also human being after all he was not an angel but still he didn't commit any sins. He didn't commit any sins. his masoom he is very innocent L- like you know average people we we all are average or below we do sins but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never did that but even though he didn't but allah is saying that li yaghfir lak allah that allah will completely clean your record that any small deed even that was not uh, up to a high standard it will be erased just like a eraser how you will be sometimes writing and you feel oh this is incorrect then you erase it erase it and it will be re- replaced by something that is much better and if and we see that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he would worship 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why would he do so, so much? Because he is already forgiven, right? Afala akuna abdan shakura. So he says, I want to be more thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when you are more thankful, Allah will give you more, more, more. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would offer the night prayer. Here talking about, you know, tahajjud. And his feet used to be uh, crack. You know, when you stand more, you could see the feet will be cracked. And you could, you could feel the pain in your uh, feet. And... Uh, the the swollen the kind of uh, you, you know the surface of the uh, feet will be changed so she will be asking ya rasulullah sallallahu alaihi why do you do it since allah has forgiven you your faults and the past and the you know why would you again he would say afala abdin shakura why would i not should i not be grateful to the, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because I want to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be thankful to Allah because Allah has given us so much compared to others. Allah has given us very beautiful life. We all are good. Alhamdulillah. Always look down, not look up. But these days we try to look up and we sympathize ourselves. So when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to worship with the same feeling. First of all, we need Allah's forgiveness, maqfira. And desperately we need Allah's forgiveness because what is that action that we do? And we can say, yes, I have done it perfectly. I don't think I can say that, you know. Which salah is that we can say, oh, yes, I did it very perfectly. We can try though, but we can't say for sure Allah knows best. Only our trying, we, we could uh, fall short. So for everything... In the, you know, personal life also, day-to-day -day life also, there are certain things happens. But still, we are trying our best. Allah knows that. So, in the following ayah, ayah number 3 and 4. Wa yan suraka Allahu nasran aziz. So, here and that Allah may help you the strong help. Allah is aziz and mighty, strong. And nasran is, you know, from help. Allah can only help. And ayah number four, who will the Anzala Sakina Tafi Kulubil Mu'minina Lias Dadu Iman and Ma'a Imanihim, Walillahi Junudu Samawati Walad, Wakana Allahu Aliban Hakima. He it is who sent down Sakina, any calmness and tranquility into the hearts of the believers that may grow more in Iman, faith, along with their present faith. And to Allah belongs the hosts of heaven and earth and Allah is ever knower all wise. So these two ayahs when you see ayah number uh, 3 and 4 so in the 3 we have seen about وَيَنْ سُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَسْرًا Aziz, Aziza and Allah may aid you with the mighty victory. Who gave the victory? Allah gave it. Apparently it was looking very hard. It was difficult. So because you see this 10 years of peace that allowed the message of Islam to spread far and wide and eventually it was the treaty of Hudaybiyah that Mushrikeen themselves violated that led to the conquest of Makkah. See the you know sometimes it looks apparently things are not in your favor but it is. Believe and trust on Allah. Because you know this surah why I selected Many times it happens, we face challenges in our life. And we, we need console for our heart, right? There is no more wahi. That was for Prophet Wasallam. Through wahi, his heart was consoled. Now our heart is getting consoled. Everyone will relate to this, right? We all go through challenges and we want to console our heart. When Rasulullah has been consoled, why not us? Because we are the ummah of Prophet Wasallam. And Allah is saying, Allah will give the victory. Whatever the things you are doing it, if it is not against Allah or Rasul, that's fine. They are do's and don'ts. Allah never said don't ask for this or that until unless it's forbidden or it's haram. Uh, ayah number four and then we'll stop inshallah. It is he who sent down tranquility, calmness and peace into the hearts of the believer that they would increase the in faith along with their present faith. And to Allah belong the soldiers of the heaven and earth and ever is Allah knowing and wise. So this was at Hudaybiyah that the Muslims, they stayed there for many days. And imagine uh, it uh, like 
I don't know it ever happened with you that when you are struck somewhere, especially I'm talking about airports uh, or when you cannot find uh, your luggage especially and you're going to some place and you don't have carry on a bag also, how you feel that discomfort and so on. You And sometimes you cannot uh, go anywhere without visa and immigration and something. These are the things I'm just mentioning. How frustrating is that, especially when you go for the Hajj and uh, the Hajj terminal and uh, may Allah protect us all. If God forbid, if somebody says, no, you are not allowed to enter. Just imagine how grief and sorrow it would be. Hmm? They went for the Umrah, prepare, and they were not allowed to enter it. It's such a grief and sorrow. For that, Allah sent the Sakina, peace and tranquility. That moment of time, they need that peace. You could understand how we feel happy when we go for the Umrah. We say, oh, we are going for the Umrah. We are happy and everything is working. At that moment, they are saying, okay, you can't enter. You don't have this paper or that paper. Just imagine how frustrating. So Allah has sent the Sakina into the Sahaba Ikram's heart. We need that peace and tranquility. So Allah made them that. So Allah says, so Sahaba was also stuck outside Makkah, unable to enter to the city of Makkah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the tranquility.